Okay, welcome to the ocean. So for science today, Thursday, you're going to be in pages 145 through 150, and we are going to be learning about the ocean movement, okay? I'm going to be reading some things to you that aren't on your paper, and then we're going to be reading some things together that are on your paper, okay? So just have that oceans ready. We're going to be on 147, but before we do that, I just want you to put the paper down and just pay attention right here for a few minutes, okay? If we were at school, this would be the unit that we absolutely go ballistic. So, as you can see, I'm kind of decking the corner of my kitchen out. One of my favorite places in the world is the Monterey Bay Aquarium. I have a, a membership. And on a little side note, not more than 15 minutes ago, I got word that my oldest daughter, Amanda, who just got her degree at Berkeley, finished up and has been working uh, in Pittsburgh, Antioch, known uh, at the school, Riverview and whatnot, she just got a job and is moving to Monterey. So she's lived in Monterey one other time, doing some schooling there and some work, but now she's gonna be moving to Monterey. So, it looks like I might have a place to stay when I go visit the aquarium. But, uh, if you go on the website for the Monterey Bay Aquarium, they are offering some free educational opportunities for you. So, they were anyway, so check it out, see if they still are. They might have some fun things for you to do. And, uh, it is a place that I really enjoy. Uh, so, check that out. But anyway, I have a daughter moving to Monterey, so that was kind of interesting. So anyway, speaking of the ocean, I'm just going to read some things. Like I said, we're going to be talking about uh, waves, how waves are formed, and I just want to start with telling you that, in short, the wind blowing across the ocean surface is what causes waves to blow, I mean waves to form the wind blowing. Waves, as you know, can range in size from just little ripples to huge, huge storm surges that come up on land and um, cause some uh, damage, but we don't get that very often. Earthquakes on the ocean floor can cause enormous waves known as tsunamis. We're not going to have that here. At least we haven't experienced that ourselves. We're going to also be talking about tides. What is a tide? A low tide and a high tide. Tides are the daily rise and fall of the level of the ocean. Every day there will be a tides. When the tide comes in, the ocean level gets higher. When the tide goes out, the ocean level gets lower. And tides are actually affected not by the wind, but by the gravitational pull on the Earth's surface from the moon. And that's what calls, it's the pull of the moon uh, that affects the tide. And I told you there's already two kinds. The water along the coast rises higher and higher as the tide comes in. This process takes approximately six hours to happen, and that's called high tide. As the water continuously recedes for the next six hours, we have low tide. So that's in a time frame of about 12 hours, half of a day. You have half that time high tide, half that time low tide. Okay, I'm going to show you a little bowl of water that I colored blue. If I stir it, we get movement, don't we? We might think of that as being like an ocean current. But watch what happens when I blow my warm breath across the surface of this water. What do I get besides a mess? I get much more activity, don't I? I get waves, waves on the water, okay? So, we're gonna take a look right here at what 
starts the whole process. The sun, as we know, is the center of our solar system. The sun is the energy source that begins a wave. Why is that? Because when the sun causes air to warm, we've learned that with evaporation, warm air rises, doesn't it? And as warm air rises, it replaces the cold, it is replaced by cold air and as the air moves, the wind begins to blow. Of course, we know moving air, we call it wind. And then as the wind blows over the surface of the ocean water, wind pushes the ocean water, giving it energy of motion, which we call a wave. We don't look out there and go, wow, there's a lot of energy of motion going on. We say, wow, look how high the waves are today. Well, that all started with the sun warming the air, the warm air rises, replaced by cold air that pushes against the ocean water, causing waves to form. Okay, so why don't we go ahead then and look on page 147. I'm going to try to wipe up the mess I made with my feet so I don't slip and fall. Okay, so on page 147, there's a Bible verse at the top, and it says, He commands even the winds and the water, and they obey Him. Remember, Jesus walked on water. Remember, Jesus stopped the storm when the disciples were in the, in the boat. Jesus even called Peter to come to Him walking on the water, and as long as Peter kept his eyes on Jesus, he was fine. Once he took his eyes off of Jesus, he began to sink, right? God's design of ocean movement shows his power. Waves, currents, and tides are three kinds of ocean movement. Can you say those with me? Waves, currents, or inside, and tides. Okay, let's try that again. Waves, currents, and tides are the three types of ocean movement. It says, number the sentences to show how waves are formed. So we need to find which one happens first. First sentence says, the cold air sinks as the warm air rises, the air moves and wind blows. That does not sound like number one. What's the next one? The sun heats the air over the ocean and the warm air rises. That sounds like number one, right? So you wanna put a one in front of that second sentence. What do you think number two might be? Do you think we've already read it? The sun heats the air over the ocean. The warm air rises. The cold air sinks as the warm air rises and air moves and begins to blow. So the first sentence we read should be number two. Let's go down to the third line. As the wind blows across the ocean surface, the water moves and the waves begin to form. The last one says the wind keeps blowing, the waves get bigger, and the wave travels until it breaks on the land. So which one of those happened first? Right, the third one. As the wind blows across the ocean surface, the water moves and the waves begin to form. So the third one should be number three, the fourth one should be number four. So we've got two, one, three, four, right? Okay, next page says an ocean current, that's why I did that, is a flow of water inside an ocean that moves in one direction. If you've ever seen Nemo, which I'm sure you have, remember how they caught that current. A current is like a river running through the ocean. You don't always see it on the surface. That's why sometimes they will have warning signs to be careful for the current because you think I'm safe, I'm fine, I'm just gonna step out in the ocean, but there could be something underneath that will move you in a direction you don't wanna go. It says, currents can carry warm water all around the earth. They take nutrients and foods to ocean animals. It's like conveyor belt, they deliver their food to them. The tide is the daily rise and fall in the level of the ocean. At high tide, the water comes up further on the beach than at low tide. 
So it says, right, high tide or low tide to label each picture. Well, if you compare the pictures, the first one, you don't hardly even see the water, do you? Because the water is at low tide. So the first one you want to write low tide. The second one, the water is up to those water stain lines really on the rock. And that would be high tide. So you've got low tide and high tide. Then we're going to go ahead and turn the page. And we're going to take a look at the ocean floor. Okay. I have so many cool books. I'm hoping I'll be able to have a chance to read a few of them to you. The ocean floor. It says match each word to its definition. Well, you don't know that yet because you haven't really been taught it. But we're just going to, uh, I'm going to go ahead and erase this. So we have a little bit of space. Okay, because I might want to draw that. It says, match each word to its definition. Okay, first of all, I will tell you um, what these different words are, and let's see if you can remember. So, a continental shelf. A continent is a body of land. A shelf is something you put things on, and usually there's a drop, right? So, a continental shelf. Continental shelf is where the uh, land slopes into the water. So you might put your towel there, you might put a chair there, but this is where the land begins to slope into the water. So that would be a continental shelf. A trench, however, let's see, here's the water. A trench, you might be able to well, step out for a little ways, but all of a sudden, whoom, the water goes down really deep. It might not happen that close to the shore, but it eventually will happen. And that is called a trench. A trench is a very narrow valley you don't see from the surface of the water, right? A trench is a narrow valley. The ocean contains a trench that is six times deeper than the Grand Canyon in Arizona. Six times. If you've ever seen the Grand Canyon or a picture of it, it's deep, right? Well, there is a trench in the ocean that is six Grand Canyons deep. That is crazy. And it, um, an undersea mountain is a peak that looks like a mountain, right? It looks like a mountain, but still it is under the ocean. You don't really see it because it is an undersea mountain. Okay, so we'll call that the undersea mountain. Okay. But sometimes an undersea mountain's top might rise above the surface. So if you have an undersea mountain whose top eventually rises above the surface, right, what would you call that? Hawaii? What is Hawaii? It is an island. We have many islands out there in the ocean, but an island is just simply an undersea mountain that made it above the level of the ocean. Okay, so those are the definitions of that. So let's take a look at your paper. It says match each word to its definition. The first one is continental shelf. Is that a narrow valley? land that slopes into the water, an undersea mountain whose top rises out of the water, or a high peak of land that is underwater, a continental shelf. You should draw a line from the word continental shelf to the second dot, right? Land that slopes into the water. Good. What is an undersea mountain? Can you find the words that say a high peak of land that is underwater, an undersea mountain? 
is a high peak of land that is under the water. Draw a line there. A trench, do you find the definition that says a narrow valley? That's where you want to draw your line from trench. Last but not least, island, an undersea mountain whose top rises out of the water, right? I wish I could, we'll put some coconuts. Okay, so those are the answers for that page. Now go to the next page and it wants you to label. It wants you to use the word bank to label the parts of the ocean floor. So what's in the word bank? Island, trench, undersea mountain, continental shelf. So you pretty much have it here. So number one, let's call that number one. So number one, what are you going to copy? Continental shelf. So find continental shelf, it's the last set of words in your purple word bank. And for number one, write continental shelf because that's what that is. Okay. Then there's a two down there. What is that, that is a, you're right, trench. A trench is a deep valley that goes under the water. You don't see it from the surface, trench. Number three is right there. What is that? There's your answer, undersea mountain. That's what you write for number three. And last but not least, number four is right there. And number four is your what? Island. Good. Their island is cuter than mine. That's okay. Island. And then number five says, how is an undersea mountain different from an island? I'll let you write that yourself. An undersea mountain is completely underwater and an island's is above the surface of the water. You could write something like that. And then it says, how is an undersea trench different from a valley? Well, the only way an undersea trench is different from a valley is that an undersea trench is under the sea. Okay, so you can say an undersea trench is underwater. A valley is on land. Like we live in the Diablo Valley, we're not underwater, but we've got mountains and foothills all around us and the land slopes and there's our houses and roads and all that sort of stuff. So an undersea trench is underwater, a valley is on land above water, okay? So go ahead and finish that page and that will conclude us. Like I said, check out the Monterey Bay Aquarium, I know they have offered, sent me offers for free um, educational programs during this time of distance learning and see what you can find out, okay? And see if you can find something to do there. All right, have a great day. This is it for Thursday. I will see you tomorrow or I've already seen you with our um, Zoom experience, okay? See you later, bye-bye.